Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We have a special show this week. We only do it two times a year, and that's Big Buck Night West and Big Buck Night East, and that's where we're gonna start this week. Down there at Nova at Autorama, just a few weeks back, we got some big deer, some big stories. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Big Buck Night right here on Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor, the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. The Michigan Charter Boat Association has provided education of the Great Lakes fishery for over 52 years. Information about Great Lakes fishing opportunities as well as captain advocacy can be found at michigancharterboats.com. Mid-Michigan Ponds has been building and maintaining ponds and lakes throughout Michigan for nearly 25 years. We combine biology and heavy equipment to make pondscapes that are sustainable and fishable. More information at midmichiganponds.com. Okay, our first lucky hunter is Rhett Richardson. Rhett sent me this. He is 15 years old, and he sent me a letter saying that he shot two 13-pointers this year. We don't have scores on these, uh, but when he said he shot two 13-pointers, one in Genesee County, one in Oakland County, I said, you know what? I think we're going to have to have you on Big Buck Night. So I want to hear the story. I think you shot the big one first, right? Okay, so why don't you tell me the story, what happened with, I mean, it's a cool buck with velvet still hanging on. Tell me what happened on that hunt, Rhett. Uh, this one I was hunting at my dad's friend's, and we, he saw pictures of it on the trail camera and stuff. My dad's been hunting with him for over 35 years, and we're sitting out there. He came right through the woods. Uh, I got on him, and he came he was right through he, on a lane, and uh, I shot him, and he dropped. So tell me what happened with this other one. This one uh, I shot with my dad as well. We are hunting out back, and I've been hunting this buck for pretty much as long as I've been hunting. And uh, so he came right in. He, was, he came to a scrape. We seen him out the, out the stand but I couldn't get a shot on him, so then he walked right right in front of us, and uh, he was facing us, and then I shot him on a quarter and away shot. And th so this one was with a crossbow? or Crossbow. Yeah, crossbow. Okay, so then when you went up and found this one, are you, like the season's over, and you're just hooting and hollering, what was going on? Yeah, me and my dad, we were really, uh, really happy because we've been after this buck for a while. All right, giddy up. This is our second hunter of the night here on Big Buck Night, Michael Hinchcliffe. 
shot this 15-point buck, 156 inches in Washtenaw County. What date did you shoot him on, Michael? November 5th. November 5th, so archery season. Tell us how that all happened out there. Well, I shot it with the crossbow, and I had about a mile hike in on state land, and by the time I got there, I was a sweating mess. So I, I had to shed some clothes, and I hadn't even knocked a bolt yet in my crossbow. And then I heard a snap behind me, and I turned to look, and I saw the buck coming up the ridge. So I had to quickly knock an arrow and regain my composure and slowly turn around. He came in at 22 yards. I shot him. He ran 100 yards, and that was it. Oh, my goodness. So you're on the ground on state land? Is this what happened? Uh, no, I was in a tree stand. Okay, so you had already done your scouting and everything. Did, have you seen him out there at all before? Yeah, I got a trail cam picture last December of 22, and then I saw him on camera again the 22nd of October. Two weeks later, I shot him. Holy moly. And his brow tines are amazing. I don't know if you can see that. They're palmated. One side's got three points on a palmated brow tine. It's so cool. Three points on the other brow tine. So, okay, so you shoot him, it goes, it's all over, you go check him out. Does it seem real at this point? Uh, no. First thing I did was call my dad for help. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Biggest buck ever? Biggest buck ever. On state land. Unbelievable. Let's give Michael a round of applause. Congratulations. Our next lucky hunter is Tommy Grossman. This one scored 157, shot with a crossbow in Washtenaw County. It is a nice big 10 point. Tommy, let's hear the story. What happened with this bruiser? Well, I was uh, combining beans in front of my property there and I was going across the field and I seen this laying in the weeds. So I combined back across, called my wife, bring the crossbow out. Because it's right by the house. She brought it out to me and I went halfway back across the field and um, I stopped, got out of the combine and kind of snuck up there and and went around some machinery and stuff, but he uh, he jumped up, but he didn't take right off, so I was able to get a almost still shot, and he ran over into the swamp east of my place. <laughs> I know, man. So wait, almost, an almost still shot, so you were almost still, the buck was almost still, what was? Well, he jumped up and you know how they jump up and really take off. But oh, yeah. He didn't really take off. I don't know if he was wounded from a car because we're right by the road. But I took the shot. So he was moving? Yes. He was moving slow? It, it, when I pulled, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I probably didn't get the greatest shot. So okay. We had blood. I called her up. You know, it was getting close to dark, and, um, you know, we tracked it a little ways, and then we kind of lost some blood in the swamp. So I didn't want to jump him, so we just thought we'd come back next morning. Well, no, you, found, you did the right thing. You, you let him lay, and then you found him later in that, that, that second day? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeehaw! We've got Kyle Rodriguez here with his 160-inch and 2 eighths. 10 point from Washtenaw County, taken with a 450 Bushmaster. You've got a history with this buck, eh? A little bit, yeah. So um, this is just the result of uh, making dreams and setting goals. Back in 19, I shot my first decent buck, um, 100, or three and a half year old nine point that scored right around 116 inches. And uh, from there on out, I was hooked and wanted to learn how to kill mature bucks. And here I am four seasons later shoot a 160-inch 10-pointer. I shot him on November 20th after I unfortunately missed him in archery season, which was a terrible feeling, as I'm sure some of you guys might know. I practiced a little bit more, and I had a, uh, a taxi cam go off, and I, I came home from work early, and I was able to get him with my 450 on November 20th. So he was with the, the doe is what got him in trouble. So. <laughs> awesome. Great story. Thank you so much, Kyle. Appreciate your story. Todd, what happened with this heavy horned buck? Um, <clears throat> there's a spot that I haven't been hunting in quite a few years, and second day of season I went out there and sat, 
And at 9 o'clock, he come running through chasing a doe. And I went to shoot at him, and my gun didn't go off. The bolt action was opened up, so I had to put the bolt back in it. And The bolt action was out of the gun? No, opened up, so it wouldn't shoot. And uh, so I found him back running through the trees chasing at the doe, and he kind of stopped for a quick second. I shot. Thought I hit him. He ran out a little bit, and I shot again and missed. You know, on them flying, running shots, you think you're going to get them? You don't. Um, <laughs> So I went to looking for blood. I tried to find blood. I found a little bit of blood, but I have a problem. I'm colorblind. So I had to call my son, and he come over and help me track it. We tracked about 150 yards and laid there dead on the edge of the cornfield, and it's a pretty exciting time. <laughs> so how does that work be, with other deer? How does that work being colorblind? You just can't see blood. <laughs> that, that's probably a bit of an issue. It is. You try to drop him. I wish he'd have dropped, but he didn't. Uh, Never had a clue he was out there. No idea this buck was even around. So Saginaw County, is that, is that, have you grown up hunting that area? Yes, yep. Is that a whole lot of big bucks? I guess it does now. <laughs> there one less? One less, yep. So when you, I mean, did it all happen pretty quick? Did you know, could you see how big that rack was and how heavy it was? No, I, when I called my son, I said, hey, I'm coming to get you. He said, what'd you shoot? And I said, it's either the world's biggest spike or a big buck. I have no idea how big it is. I really don't know how big it is. This is Jesse Forsyth from Lenaway County. 164 and 5 eighths inch, 13 point. Another brow tine that's kind of palmated, three points there. Compound bow. Tell us how that happened out there. First of all, I can't believe it. I have messed up every opportunity on every big buck that's ever walked by my tree stand. I am Murphy's Law, and so I finally put it together has been, uh, it's, it's been a dream. If you ask my wife, I've been holding the antlers more than her for the last three months, and <laughs> God bless you, sweetheart. Um, I have an opportunity to lease ground with a really good group of people, and uh, we've added ground, and we've added patience and we've passed three and a half and now we're passing four and a half and it's years of of hunting and paying off but I think this buck Jenny really uh, is a culmination of everything that my dad taught me in the woods uh, keeping the wind in your face having the good access points knowing what you're doing uh, checking your trail cams and understanding when to hunt and when not to hunt uh, but I've kind of nicknamed uh, I've given this buck a new nickname and he's called the backpack buck my dad has been telling me for years, we take too much gear to the woods. We are, it's too cumbersome. We have too much. Um, and we have all these hooks and everything is hanging on the tree all over the place. And we were talking about it and talking about it. And I decided that night not to take my backpack. And when this buck came in, the, uh, I gave a couple uh, grunts towards the bedding area, saw a small swirl, and this buck came in about 80 yards away and was coming right to the base of the tree. And so from when I saw him to when I shot him, it was 25 or 30 seconds total. So it was stand, grab the bow, turn, turn all the way in the stand. And I had to turn all the way around to be facing the tree. And the backpack hook that I would have had was on this side of the tree. And I would not have been able to make the shot if that bag was in the way. So, Dad, thanks for the encouragement. Thanks for the lessons. Appreciate it. Tell me the story. Did you know this thing was out there? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, it was like the worst deer season at the start to the best at the end. Uh, um, I didn't know he was out there till November 14th because I rolled my ankle uh, pretty much all bow season, so I couldn't really get out there. And then we checked our cameras on the 14th and realized he was there. So tell me the story. So you shot him during gun season? Yeah, I shot him in the muzzleloader season. Uh, November 18th okay. and uh, I kind of jipped my wife because this is uh, only the second time I ever hunted in her blind and uh, <laughs> I got the pictures of him um, I, in my son's uh, camera and then back at my blind but I was just sitting there normal day and then there's uh, three does come running in and then um, with the fawn so let them pass, and a little three-point fell behind, and um, I heard something rushing around for about 45 minutes. Uh, I was hunting on a gully and a big ridge on my right-hand side, and 
all I had seen was just a rat coming across the ridge. Um, and he was standing behind these bushes, and I thought he was just a regular old Michigan 10-point, you know, a nice one. And I'm not a big trophy hunter, but I thought, well, he's going to be good. So I uh, thought I had a clear shot. I shot some um, bucks through some trees, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to take the shot. And I did, and he dropped right there. Buckle up, folks. Our next hunter is Jeff Scheel. He shot this 166-inch 14-point buck in Washtenaw County during muzzleloader season. Jeff, was this your biggest buck ever? Yeah, for sure. All right. Tell us, where were you? Private land? Yeah, private land. It was December 3rd, which is a Sunday. I watched the first half of the Lions game and decided I was going to watch the second half in the blind, wait for daylight to get towards the end. So I had my backpack on with snacks and I had a couple propane bottles in my hand and my rifle in the case on my back also and I walked out to the blind and just one step from the blind I looked out and I saw that side standing out in front of it so I stepped behind the blind so he didn't see me put down the propane bottles in my backpack and the rifle case and then peeked around the blind and he was still there so then I unzipped the rifle case loaded the rifle peeked around again, and he's still there facing the other direction, about one step away. All right, hold on. What's he doing out there? Does he have a doe with him? Uh, I only saw him. I don't, uh, maybe there was a doe, but that's all. I, I saw him quick, and I hid. <clears throat> so he was one step from being out of sight, so I hurried up and made the shot, and then he was out of sight, and I didn't, the recoil, I couldn't tell whether I hit him or not. He was just gone. I saw flickers of him going through the brush, and... At that point, I didn't know what to do because I'd never like, just walked up and shot a deer before. So I put my stuff in the blind and went and uh, went down to look for blood. And there was just very little specks of blood, so I was a little bit nervous. Uh, but there was enough to follow and found him about 40 yards from where he was standing. Wow. So you did not get to watch the Lions. Did they win on December 3rd? They did, but they almost lost that game. Brent? What happened with this wide, nice buck? Well, it's kind of interesting. I hadn't hunted all year. Uh, the kids are in football. We're here, there, and everywhere. Um, I decided the night before opening day of gun season, I ran to Myers, got a license. Good idea. Yep. <laughs> Went out the next morning. Uh, within an hour, he came out, and that was the end of it. Okay. Well, let's go to our next hunter. <laughs> <laughs> No, so uh, I was out. I had to drop my boy off, Sawyer, to uh, the in-law so I could uh, actually go out hunting. And dropped him off, got out to the blind. I grabbed an extra chair. Couldn't remember if I took the, the other chair out. Uh, took an extra propane tank, but I couldn't find my heater. So, so when I got out... Those are all crucial things. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I got out there, got all settled in, seen a couple does come out of the swamp, cross the ridge... I uh, had a small buck uh, stop, kind of started grunting a little bit. He kept going. Uh, maybe 20 minutes later or so, this guy and another one came out and uh, about 60 yards, double lunged him. I uh, found blood for like 10 yards, and then I thought, oh man, I don't know. Went down the swamp, and there he was, and it was just incredible. So. <laughs> See, that's what's nice about hunting. You can do the uh, check all the trail cams and do all the hard stuff, or you can stumble out there after not hunting all year and yeah. hook your propane up to your extra chair and <laughs> walk stands out there at 60 yards and double on them. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And uh... <laughs> so, what's the plan for next year? Just go out one more day? Yeah, I don't want to overdo it. So. <laughs> I think in maybe 45 minutes next year, we'll see what happens. <laughs> now, what's the, uh, what's the shed all about over here in your other hand? So, I actually had some very good friends of ours uh, from Grass Lake. Um, they were out shed hunting last year and found this shed right here. And they gave it to a buddy that actually hunted the property they found it on. And uh, we got in touch, found out that I had shot the deer, and uh, he gave it to me. So, I figured I'd bring that up and kind of show it off also. Nice. So you even have other people do your shed hunting. Yeah, I don't really have to do much of anything. <laughs> I like this guy. 
It's better to be lucky than good. Brent Jones, let's give him a round of applause. Wow, is a check out this next book. Dan Myers shot this gorgeous 11.175 inches in Lenaway County with a shotgun. And your family has a little history with this book, right? Yeah, this uh, should have been my 10 year old daughter standing up here, actually. She missed it in youth season, so mid September. And uh, my father in law missed him two years prior as a three year old. So I was kind of lucky. My daughter was with me when I killed him. When he came in, she was so shook up, you could hear her gun rattling on the shoot rest of the tree stand. And as he turned, he was following a doe out. And I said, kiddo, I love you, but I don't think I can let him leave the woods. And she was pretty shook up, not able to get him in her scope. But she was pretty excited once we got up to him. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so how far away was he when he came past you? Roughly 80 to 90, he was following a doe, and she actually saw the doe first, and I was like, there's something better behind him, and then she kind of got the shakes and the fever going on there, but it was kind of a team effort. That is incredible. So you were the third family member to take a crack at him. Yeah. You were successful, all out of the same stand or the same land? Same land, not the same stand, but within 500 yards of each other. Awesome. So you and your daughter both have buck fever at this point, right? Yeah. What happens next? Uh, we called mom, who was out there. She was a few hundred yards away, waited for her to get to us, and then we all walked up on him together, which was really cool, kind of a family affair. I'm sitting at work on November 2nd. Camera goes off at 12 o'clock. He's with a doe. I look at my boss. I told my boss, I said, what time can I leave work? He said, 5 o'clock. I said, are you serious? He said, 5 o'clock. 3.20, he's back in there again with the dough. I said, man, can I leave? He's like, no, you cannot leave until 5. 5 o'clock, coming ro rolling around. I didn't say bye to no one. I got in the truck. I flew to the blind, got in the blind. About 6.20, my camera went off. My camera's about 30 yards through the thicket, and he's standing there with the dough. It went off again. I said, if he goes to the right, he's going back out to the cornfield. If he goes to the left, he's coming to me. He went to the right. I said, oh my God, he's leaving. He's taking off. I got another picture. Here he comes back through the thicket. He steps out of the thicket with, behind her at 40 yards. She runs out into the CRP field and she's standing there and he's standing at 40 yards. I go to take a shot, he takes a step. I hit him in, uh, in the lung liver. I'm like, I just messed up the best deer I'll ever shoot in my life. I just messed up. It took off running It stood out in the middle of the bean field for about, 35 minutes. I'm could, you, could you see him at that point? Yeah, I could see him. He's standing out there. Well, I'm sitting there watching him, and I'm watching him. Well, next thing I know, I look over. Here comes a bigger eight-point walking out of the corner of the woods, walks up to him, puts his head down, and they start fighting out in the middle of the bean field. I'm like, well, you got to be kidding me, man. How far is he from me at this point? He's about 100 yards. So he's standing out there about 100 yards. The eight-point leaves, and he finally lays down. Now it sets in. I get the shakes. My heart's pumping. I'm like, oh, my God, he's laid down. He's, he's going to, you know, he's going to expire. I, I, I got him, you know what I mean? Got back in the morning. I got to the edge of the bean field before it was uh, daylight when I'm standing there at the edge of the bean field with my binoculars because the uh, combine is in the field ready to cut the beans. I'm like, oh, my God, if he cuts the beans, he's laying in the beans, he's going to run it over. So I call my buddy. He gets there. I go drop him off on the other side of the bean field by this thicket. He gets out. He walks up in the thicket, and he's walking around in the thicket. He sends me a picture of a selfie of him going like this with the deer. He says, he says, I got him, dude. Parker Smith shot this buck. Now, it's a 16 point, 196 and 1 eighth inches. And that spread nearly 23 inches wide in Shiawassee County in Gabe Van Wormer's neighborhood, probably. Um, with a 20 gauge. Yep. So tell us what day were you out there? What happened? So I, have, I wasn't able to go out hunting at all this entire season until opening day of gun season, which works out for me because I don't really like to go out bow hunting too much. But opening day, you know, typical 22 year old college student. I woke up a little late. I woke up around 6 a.m., made it out to my shack around 6.30 and Around 8.30, I finally laid eyes on him, and I was watching him throughout the entire day. Around 1.30, he 
he finally came in to where I was able to shoot, but I didn't. He was about 113 yards broadside. I texted my dad and my grandpa, like, what should I do? Because my gun sighted in for 120 gauge, not very reliable, past 100. And so I texted them. They told me, just be patient. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So that's exactly what I did. Don't get me wrong, like 20 minutes later, I was kicking myself in the butt for not doing it. But I made peace with it. And then around 3.30, he gave me an opportunity at 90 yards broadside, chasing some does. And I picked a spot out in the field where I saw that he was coming towards. And once he got to that, I ranged, find it, ranged it about four more times just to make sure. And then put it on his shoulder and squeeze the trigger and watched him go down through my scope, running through the woods. Thanks to everyone that was a part of Big Buck Night East. Stay tuned for next week's show where we'll have Big Buck Night West from Grand Rapids. We'll see you next week right here on Michigan Out of Doors. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By SCI. SCI helps protect, promote, and preserve wildlife through conservation practices, which include hunting. SCI supports and funds conservation programs in the state of Michigan. Learn more how you can get involved at a chapter near you. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man.